But again, this is just the type of innovation that we're trying to bring to Azure government. Four days to create it, and just you, hopefully the scenarios, you can kind of run wild in your mind there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to flip it back over to Vishwas again, which, and he is going to talk about the Cognitive Toolkit running on NC series and GPU. Thank you, Steve. Uh, you know, I was watching that video of, of your kids pulling up. Uh, it was great. But the video also told me that your registration has expired. Oh, so just, just, yes, just, I got just, just, that. <laughs> just, just be careful. No. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, so Steve showed a number of cognitive APIs, right? And, uh, you know, he showed some examples of where the algorithm was able to pick up some numbers. He also showed some examples where the algorithm did not accurately predict what was in the frame of the picture, right? For situations where you're trying to run a custom model where you have a very domain-specific things that you want to apply machine learning on, you can, of course, start out with the cognitive API, but then if you really want to have the raw power of uh, this API, then, then Microsoft has something called the CNTK, which is the Cognitive Toolkit, which you can apply on a problem like this. And in fact, Cognitive Toolkit is sort of the underpinning of many of the services that Steve was talking about. So, so you can use it at that level of abstraction, or you can drop down and directly model it in CNTK. So what is CNTK very quickly? It's, it's an open source neural network library available on GitHub. And uh, it has about 12,000 stars on that GitHub project. And if you look at some of the performance results comparing it to other open source libraries like TensorFlow, it does pretty well in terms of performance numbers. So I, I encourage you to, to check it out. And, and you can see I brought up the GitHub page. So what I'm going to show you <clears throat> is a demo of image detection. So Steve was talking about a problem called, which is commonly referred to as image classification. So you show a picture, and you're trying to figure out if this is a picture of this person. Image detection is a slightly more difficult problem because you're not just classifying an image. You're actually also figuring out the coordinates and the objects within an image. So it's a slightly more difficult problem. And before I show you the demo, I have to, to, to present a couple of uh, concepts for that demo to make sense. So, so we are all on the same page. Everybody has heard the term new deep learning, uh, and I, I know you have a general understanding of that for, for folks who have not, don't understand this. Let me bring up a very quick picture. Uh, I won't get into the math of, of deep learning or anything like that, but suffice to understand that you, know, you can apply a predictive algorithm, uh, but if you want to apply it to problems which require multiple level, deep levels of learning, that's essentially what uh, deep learning is about. Let me, I pulled up a couple of pictures to help me explain these concepts better. So the first picture I wanted to bring up is this is, this is don't pay attention to all the technical terms. And you know, the thing that I want to call out here is on the left-hand side of the screen, you have a picture, and we are trying to detect. And on the right-hand side of the screen, starting from the center, uh, you have multiple level deep network and loosely modeled after how our human brain works, where you have collection of neurons and, and things like that. So you have multiple layer deep of, of, of network, and each network learns. So you can see that you know, each network is learning a, a feature or a characteristic about that image, and you end up at the far end of the spectrum where the network is able to predict uh, with higher degree of confidence that it is indeed a boat uh, and not a dog or a, or a bird or things like that. Okay? So, so everybody understand the concept of, of neural network deep learning. Now I'm going to introduce one more concept. Uh, um, there's the type of neural network called the convolution neural network, which are very useful for image processing tasks. And let me show you one other picture. Once again, not getting into the nitty gritties of that, but watch this picture, and this sort of explains you the concept of what convolution neural networks are. I'll explain it to you very simply. Ultimately, a picture is nothing but a matrix of pixels. And in order to detect this, what we do is we apply a filter, which is also another matrix, and we, we shift that. So you see that green filter, and then you will see a red filter. All we are doing is we are shifting it slowly. So as you can imagine, and, and we go region by region, 
pick out some characteristics, and then go multiple levels in order to figure out what that object is. Okay? That's probably the quickest explanation of convolution neural networks there is. So one thing to take away from this, that this operation right here can be very expensive. We are doing all kind of matrix multiplication here, which is really, which requires a lot of compute capability. And if you were to run a learning algorithm just on a CPU, it would be really hard to run it. Why? Uh, because uh, you know, CPUs are great at getting a piece of data and bringing it, but if you wanted to bring large chunk of data, somebody had a good analogy there. So CPUs are like a Ferrari to, if you wanted to take a bunch of packages from one place to another, a Ferrari is great at that, put the package there and quickly run down. But if you want to take tons of packages, you probably need a big truck for doing that. So think of GPUs as that truck uh, and, and, and you know, CPUs as the Ferrari. So with that in mind, so, so I've introduced three concepts before I jump into a demo. We have need a deep, learn, deep network, a neural network to learn. On top of that, we need something called the convolution neural network for image processing. And on top of that, we need GPUs to be able to successfully run this or in an efficient manner. Okay? With these three concepts in place, let me bring you back uh, to a machine here, uh, which is running also in Azure Gov. And this machine is an N-series machine, which is a GPU-based machine. So we have all kinds of hardware configurations available. We have a GPU machine. We provisioned it, installed the, the NVIDIA driver on it. So once I have this GPU-based machine, now I started to train this uh, algorithm on a set of images. So let me very quickly show you the algorithm here. Uh, let's just go to Visual Studio Code for a moment. And the beauty of using CNTK is, as you can imagine, if we had to write this neural network from ground up, it would be pretty complicated to do. What CNTK does is, you can essentially define the configuration of that neural network in a configuration file. And what you see here is that configuration file. Uh, well, this is the Python script that calls that configuration file. Here's the configuration file. And you essentially say, give it some parameters of how deep your network needs to be, uh, how fast should be the learning rate, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, without getting into all of the details, but I, you know, this is a, a example is available on the web if you want to drill down deeper. So essentially what I'm going to do is, I have uh, you know, a configuration modeled out here, and we are using something called not even convolution neural network, we are using somebody in 2015, I believe, came up with something called the fast convolution neural network, and that's what I'm using. So once I have this, I can go back to my GPU's base machine and run a learning algorithm. And then what we will do is we will, we will show this algorithm some interesting pictures. We will show it pictures like, you know, in this case, I'm trying to detect objects inside a refrigerator. And you can project from there and think of examples that may apply in your domain. So I'll show it good pictures. I'll show it some bad pictures, like hopefully you're not storing a computer in your refrigerator. So this is a bad example, this is another bad example, and this is a good example. So I will give my algorithm good and bad examples, and it will learn on these good and bad examples. And one that algorithm has learned itself, I'll give it some test examples to see how well it has done, okay? And then once we are sufficiently uh, you know, confident that this algorithm works, we will start showing it some pictures. So let's go ahead and run this. And because we are on a GPU machine, I first tried to do this on a normal CPU machine. It would take minutes, if not hours, to do this. And, and you will see this, this operation performing very quickly and on a GPU-based machine. While this is running, let me just go back to my folder here. Let's just go back here. Uh, and we were running the FOSS. And, and right here, we are using the grocery example. You can see right here, this is... This, uh, these images were generated. Let's just bring them up. And as you can see here, not only our algorithm got trained on those objects, it was now able to successfully detect these objects inside the refrigerator. And it tells you the confidence level in detecting these objects. Okay? So quick example of, before I turn it back to Steve, go with Cognitive API uh, for deeper projects specific to your domain. You can drop down to CNTK and GPU for for these kinds of applications. Thank you, Steve. Okay, great. 
So I think it's really important to emphasize, you know, our cognitive services out of the box are great, but the, the things that VisualWatch is showing you is where you really unlock the power of being able to do these custom workloads. Imagine a few years ago when we had the, the Boston Marathon bombing, the law enforcement was overwhelmed by the amount of images being sent in from the public, and it would have been nice to say, any time you see a white baseball cap in any image, immediately identify that. Or even more complex scenarios where, let's say we have video where someone comes into a video and drops a bag and walks away from the bag in a crowded area. I mean, these are the types of custom scenarios that uh, this type of technology